Grab some coffee, a Mountain Dew, maybe both. A storm is brewing, the Brainstorm. Welcome to the Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. Hey, welcome to the Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. Man, uh, I'm excited about this show. Not only, well, not just because Mike's not with me today. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not necessarily excited about that, but I am excited uh, to have Jared Cleary, uh, a strategist here at Splash Honey Media, on the show with us today. Thanks for having me. Yeah, absolutely. And we also have the president and CEO, Glenn Matthews of Modern Exterminating. Glenn, thanks for joining the show today. Well, it's good to be here. I'm a big fan of the show, so I'm glad to finally be on it. Excellent, excellent, man. We're, we're glad to have you listen to us and support mm-hmm. us and and uh, even come and physically participate on the show with us. Oh, yeah. well, I'm happy to be here. What's so great about uh, today's show, Jared, is, uh, is Glenn uh, is the president and CEO of Modern Exterminating, and, and it's a family business. It's a legacy business, which is really cool because I'm sure there are a lot of folks that are listening to our show that uh, – it's probably a lot of folks that's not listening to our show that, that operates a family business. Right. And, th- you know, that's – you can struggle with that oh yeah there's a lot of Big things to fill. there's a lot of things going on i mean the uh at the time where you're taking over you could have worked there you might not have worked there uh it could be in good shape financially it could not be in good shape financially the the culture and the climate around your family business could not be running in the direction you would like for it to run there's all types of things going on but if you've ever thought about successfully running a family business, uh, then this right here is the show that you're going to want to uh, to join in on. So here's what I know, uh, Glenn. It's a family-owned business that started in 1955, yes, right? Yes, it did. And it started with two two uh, customers. It did. And you still have one of them today. Yes, I do. How uh, cool is that? We're real proud of that fact that it's a 65-year customer. In fact, we just turned 65 uh, three days ago. Congrats uh, on 65 on, years. Yeah, on August, I mean, I'm sorry, October 3rd, uh, 1955 is when we started. That's when my grandparents started it. So literally three days ago, we uh, just had our 65th uh, anniversary celebration. Yeah. That's and, awesome. Uh, and one of those uh, customers that you originally started with uh i guess celebrated that birthday with you yeah um he's been with us for the entire 65 years he was one of our that two first so customers cool. so which is pretty cool i don't think a lot of 65 year old companies can say that i yeah, can yeah. guarantee you that's that a that's big the uh, case. customer lifetime value there for yeah, sure. yeah. That, that's uh i wish i could keep them all for that long right. if i could i'd be doing real well oh yeah, yeah. and just build on them right oh yeah, uh, yeah definitely. absolutely yeah, definitely. absolutely well, I think that is so, so cool because not only um, over that 65 years, you haven't just kept just that one customer. So you've grown in your customer base. Well, another thing that I've watched you guys do is you've grown in your geographical reach as well. Yes, we have. I mean, our customer base is now thousands of customers. Our geographical reach, uh, we're going out to Aiken now, so uh, that's good. We're going up to Sumter, Orangeburg. So I'm trying to slowly expand the territory yep. in, a, in a responsible manner. Right. So you've grown in customer base. So you've taken a, a legacy business, a family business. Mm-hmm. You've grown it in customer base. And you've grown it significantly in geographical reach. And you've grown it in services that you've offered yes i did and and we're going to dive into those services so just tell us uh tell our listeners and our viewers just kind of a summary of who modern exterminating is at this point in 2020 right now in 2020 well i guess i'd like to think that we're a a leader in the pest control industry uh like i said we've we've Mm -hmm. been around for 65 years but um you know we're trying to keep up with technology which is moving very fast uh not only in in the world but in our business as well well, I've seen technology move faster in the last three to five years and I saw it move in all the years before that and uh, we've just started a new uh, enterprise software called pest routes and uh, we're all up on that we've got iPads deployed with every technician in the field so those are the kind of things we're trying to do to uh, compete uh, with today's modern society I got a uh, Jared. I know that we have a list of questions for him, but uh, every time that I get together with Glenn, especially when both of us get together, Glenn, we we go in. We always fall down these rabbit holes of conversations, and and I'm getting ready to do it already <laughs> in the conversation. Well, so, good. I like that. I yeah, like so, I like doing that because one of the things that Glenn just brought up is just the the use of technology in a service based business. Uh, and years ago, as all three of us know, right? Mm-hmm. All three of us know. You know it better than the two of us because we would just know it from a consumer 
consumer perspective. Mm -hmm. And Glenn, you know it from a service perspective, but you know, back in the day, everything was just, oh, let me just write that down. And uh, mm -hmm. you know, uh, you call it in, you get it scheduled, you come in, you write the person a check and so on and so forth. So people, a lot of people are um, apprehensive almost about the change and the swift the, the swift changes that's taken place in the service industry from a technology perspective i mean you literally just said that over the last three to five years there's been more change than the the whole previous you know 60 mm -hmm. years right well five years ago my guys carried around six or seven contract books one for pest control one for termite one for repair work one for mosquito now all that's on the ipad so you carry right. around one device which is nice so you don't have to have all these printed documents and you don't have to have all these contract books taking up room in your vehicle now so we have one device that can do serve as a ticket book as a contract book as a scheduler as a router so i mean really it's it's so great. really it's really a win-win-win right it's a win for the organization sure because now you don't have to worry about all this paperwork coming back in right. at the end of the mm -hmm. day it's a win for the technician because he doesn't have to keep up with seven different books yeah. right mm -hmm. and it's a win for your customer because now the efficiency of everything that's taking place the documentation of what just took place at the house the uh, or your business location uh, i mean just every single thing from an efficiency perspective saves everybody time you save time you save money oh certainly and i mean you have a digital document of everything now we do so uh, our customers now have a customer portal that they can log into and see all of their contracts see their, all their services all their service tickets pictures of the property that we've taken so if you're a termite customer say and you have some termite damage we take a picture of it it automatically drops into your portal so then you can log into your portal and see you know the termite damage you may have the moisture damage you may have you know the moisture issue you may have maybe some standing water so it's really good because most customers aren't going to go into their home you know you no, probably agree. you know no, I rarely ever home, crawl, if ever to have ever home, crawled yeah. into your home i know i don't even like to do it right so obviously if you can have a, a pig of what's going on under your home and you don't even have to go look I mean what a great um, thing that is now and it's just only getting better and, and it's you know it's really modernized and made our jobs way more efficient now Jerry last time you and I got together with Glenn I, I remember Glenn and I know that uh, that you certainly would remember this as well but I remember Glenn saying what I want to do is I want to become the leader in technology in our business Mm -hmm. like i want to make sure that we integrate technology throughout our business i think that is so cool because again you're saving it's it's extremely efficient you're saving time which saves money uh, not only for you uh, and the organization but for the customer and, and it really just is a win-win-win what about like your vehicles you have like gps and all that type of stuff and all of your vehicles as well sure if you have a service business and you don't have gps on your vehicle you're asking for trouble yeah. i mean not only that our insurance company you know they like to have for us to have it too for insurance purposes. okay yeah i didn't think about it's that it's good for uh for customer service because a customer can say well you know your guy was only at my house for five minutes we can go in and check that gps and show them if, if indeed they were there five minutes or they were there 50 minutes right. you know? so you can kind of have that accountability for the customer as well as for yourself so i really like a lot of the technologies plus all of our um ipads are gps gps enabled as well okay so, so the ipad itself so you also have a backup with that also our software will show the minute they get to the house when they open up the account it shows us in real time at the office where they are so that's a great tool as well so if mrs jones calls in and says when are they coming to my house we're like well we see that they're they're at the stop ahead of you so they should be there within the next 15 to 20 minutes i love that so it keeps that communication uh, open between uh, you and your communication accountability happy. i mean i'm huge on communication uh communication is what makes or breaks a service business Yeah, i think the last thing that anybody ever wants in a service business is to get this huge window of oh we'll be there from 12 a.m to 12 p.m and at some point throughout the day we'll show up but it sounds like this technology allows them to stay in the loop and understand kind of where your guys are at to it allow does. them to live their life throughout the day and we still have service windows of course because we, sometimes we don't know how long a job's going to take right you know but um we're not like the cable company where we're going to say oh it's eight to four you right. know we can narrow it down a little bit more than that but but yeah we still have service windows only because you know sometimes you don't know how long a job's going to take mm -hmm. and, and and that's natural right that's awesome you're listening to the brainstorm with matt and mike today we have glenn matthews the president and ceo of modern exterminating 65 year old firm here in columbia south carolina Glenn, we were just talking about how you've expanded your geographic reach, your customer base, 
even your resources and your services as you offer. And really, we've been talking about uh, technology over that first segment uh, of the show. And I love it. I mean, we talked about saving from an efficiency perspective, saves time, which saves money. Uh, it helps the company. It helps the tech. It helps the consumer. Uh, we were just talking about even the appointment, having GPS on the iPads. Now we know exactly what stop they're on. So when someone says, hey, what time will someone be there? We can say, hey, you're the next stop or you're out there on the way right now. Uh, I just absolutely love that. I want to take our viewers and our listeners back because I jumped the gun uh, on all of that, but <laughs> but it was just so interesting to me. Yeah. I really wanted to to talk about that. Um, but so let's just go all the way back. Tell us the which I think is one of the coolest originating stories. Tell us the story of how modern exterminating actually got started. Well, my grandparents, you know, they were um, part part of the you know the World War II generation. My granddad went off to World War II and got back in 1942. So in 1942, he was hired by Orkin, and uh, he was a branch manager uh, for for Orkin from 1942 to 1955 and uh, in 1955 Orkin was bought by Rollins company Rollins company still owns them today and um, one thing that they did when they first bought um, uh, Orkin was they decided in all their infinite wisdom hey let's get rid of all the managers because we could save money by bringing in someone younger that we could pay less so my granddad I don't know if he was fired or let go or I don't know really what happened but uh, he and Orkin parted ways in October of 1955 and then that's when uh, he and my grandmother started modern and uh, we started from very humble beginnings not a lot of money uh, my grandparents my grandmother was the office manager my granddad was the service manager and that was kind of how the service manager the technician yeah. the pretty much everything yeah, yeah, all yeah. The hats, yeah. All the hats. and one thing my granddad was known for and when he worked at Orkin was uh, he serviced uh, Main Street and he serviced it on a bicycle so um he was got the kind of the bicycle tech that's kind of how people knew him he was a technician that, that rode the bicycle down main street and he had his bng can in his hand and he would go uh building to building to building because that was back with no competition mm. so it, oregon had everything so you could go literally building to building to building and he would spray with his bng in every building and it, it was just a real neat time i guess uh back then when when he started but um but yeah that's how we started from very humble beginnings we didn't start with 500 or a thousand customers we started with two you two. know and um uh, my grandparents had to work two jobs they had to work my grandmother's family owned the evans store which is where Sarge fry field is now okay and um they had a little grocery store and it was one of those mom and pop type grocery stores back in the day and they would work there at night and modern during the day just to make ends meet and uh, they had to do that for three years before they could uh finally go out on their own and start building modern full-time so uh they had two jobs and my grandmother used to always tell me you don't know what it's like to struggle i'm like i hope i don't because if i do that means i've done something really wrong right, right. You botched, so, you yeah it. i know yeah, i really, so really screwed it up you right. know? yeah because of the infrastructure they built right yeah and certainly yeah. by the time that's i came good, in, you know what that's a really good point yeah that's well by the point. time i came in i mean the, i mean if i would have failed i mean i would have really had to do something wrong right. or, or really screw something up at that point so uh obviously you know that was not my intention and 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 i never wanted to know what it was like to struggle because if i did then you know I, I really messed something up so um i assume that did, did it go from your grandfather to you or did it go from your grandfather to like your dad to you i mean how, what was that transition? it was a natural progression it went okay. from my grandfather to my dad to me but um uh, my grandfather was was the president for a long time okay. and uh until really until the day he died in 1998 and then my dad took over and then i took over in 20 2013 okay so um and then from 2013 on i've, I've when, when did you um come to work there I started working there in 2003. Okay. So you've been there a long time now. At this oh, yeah. Point. Oh, yeah. And when I got there, you know, we talk about technology now, but when I got there, man, we were way behind in technology. Yeah. When I say way behind, I mean way behind. We only had one computer. And, uh, you know, uh, I know a lot uh, of notepads, a lot of notepads, a lot of contract books, yeah. a lot of paper tickets. And so when I saw that, I said, you know, I think, you know, this is where I can get my niche. This is where I can help the company help, and, yeah, and help them be better. So, uh, so yeah. So I got them on computers, finally 
finally it, t- it, it took a lot of convincing but i finally got them on computers and then well now the rest is history kind of with the computers even before you started working there officially you were working there because I oh, mean, yeah. you grew up mm-hmm. in that business in that industry oh yeah when i was a little kid i'd come in it was funny my grandmother wanted <laughs> I love to love these me a little, types of stories man yeah, it's just my inspiring. grandmother wanted to give me a little job so she was like here why don't you lick the stamps that was back when you had to lick stamps <laughs> yeah, oh yeah <laughs> you know they yeah. weren't the self-adhesive yeah, stamps yeah so you had to lick them so i'd go in there and i'd lick stamps lick stamps and lick stamps <laughs> yeah. so so um I don't know if y'all ever saw the Seinfeld episode. I was getting ready. <laughs> where, <laughs> where, uh, exactly what I was on where, where the guy died from licking yeah, stamps. Yeah, like, I, I'm yeah, surprised yeah. when I was a kid I didn't die from licking stamps. Yep. Maybe that's what's wrong with me now. Yeah, you know, maybe, sometimes maybe. <laughs> licking all those stamps. But, but you no, still got all that glue in you glue, right now. Yeah, yeah. But, but when I saw that Seinfeld episode, I about fell out my chair because I was like, like that's that me. was me. When yeah. I was a kid, I was licking stamps, licking envelopes. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> that's great. Well, over those years, over those many years, as you just being involved, and I bet you've learned a ton. And uh, over that time, I bet you've, you know, in, in all business owners, you know, you experience a lot of uh, both wins and losses oh, yeah. over those times, Certainly. right? You know, you, you have you have great days and then you have not so great days. Mm-hmm. And uh, I love John Maxwell. He always says, you know, you either win or you learn. You mm-hmm. never really lose. But, you know, sometimes it feels like a loss on those days where it's just hard. And so I know, Glenn, that you've learned a ton of different things over those. Can you give, uh, and that's probably in the form of operations, sales, and marketing. Oh, yeah. You've learned a lot over those Certainly. years. Certainly. Can you give us some, uh, just the things that kind of just pop in your head, because you probably have a book on this stuff, but give us some do's and don'ts of some of the things that you've learned uh, kind of growing up and building and sustaining a great family legacy business. Well, Matt, you're a business owner as well, and you know business is like whack-a-mole. The minute one thing is going well, something else pops up and you have to whack that. But most, of, I think most of the lessons I've learned are people lessons, mm-hmm. um, uh, either personnel lessons, customer lessons so um i've always kind of known that you, you got to have good people and you got to you know hire good people and sometimes people fool you sometimes people come in and you think wow this person is really going to revolutionize our business they're really going to change our business and they don't mm-hmm. and then sometimes you think oh i don't know i mean should i hire this person or should i not then when they come in they end up being a great great employee right. for a long time so sometimes you just don't know and and my greatest lessons i think i've learned are just people and trying to figure them out and trying to figure out are they going to fit in our organization are they going to fit in our culture and uh sometimes Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But I always laugh. I'm like the ones that I think, are, okay, this guy, he's going to do it. He's going to be the the game changer, and, and then they're not. And sometimes you have to deal with that because you're wrong, you know. Mm. And I, no one likes being wrong. Yeah. But I I think a lot of the the lessons I've learned are people related. Yeah. How have the people? You talk about adapting to technology. How have you had your You've talked about your your sales or your service staff, how they utilize technology. How have has your internal staff utilize technology and how has technology kind of changed the roles that they they play in modern well you know as well as i do that people don't want to change right. and, and, and sure. i mean most people don't want to change and most people will go kicking and screaming uh through change so when we first implemented some people just didn't didn't work out very and, resistant and, yeah and they were resistant and they just didn't work out and they're no longer with us and some people said you know what i'm gonna learn this i'm gonna take the bull by the horns and i'm gonna learn how to do this right and those people have stayed with us right. and so uh most of my staff over the last five years uh unfortunately we've had to turn them over because of that but some Sometimes that's not a bad thing sometimes you have to continue to find good people and continue to adapt and continue to find people that have your vision and and want to uh, you know move forward the way you want to move forward and whenever i change softwares or 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 change the way we do things change the, the approach of our service we have a lot of kickback some people you know that they adapt and some people don't oh yeah and unfortunately you, you know you have to say goodbye to the people that don't you have to embrace the people that do and bring in new people but we have a great staff now that that, that sees my vision and that you know wants to to do things the way we want to do it now and we've done a lot of changing right. even over the last five years so but you've got to got to adapt now and you got to get everybody pulling on the same side of the rope sure and matt and i have been to your office we've seen your mm-hmm. your your training room mm-hmm. we know that you guys invest in your employees what are some of the things that you have your employees working on right now to to help better themselves and better the business well unfortunately covid killed a lot of that stuff right. yeah. you know a lot of the the learning opportunities we have are in-person learning opportunities such as conventions such as trainings and yeah. our you know we have um you know master pest control master termite trainings that you can do but unfortunately all those are in person 
so we're just trying to you know keep the morale up and keep uh you know people engaged keeping people engaged has been very hard for us uh, over this because a lot of people you know were, were working for, from home for a while mm -hmm. and a lot of our technicians were working remotely so that was hard so once things get back to normal i, I plan to, to to send them back to those training courses to, to do a lot more hands-on training but right now it's just kind of the the environment doesn't allow for that unfortunately right. but we anything that is involved in training in our industry we try to get our people involved in you know be it conventions be it uh, uh trainings from uh, clemson university does trainings be it trainings like that so i'm trying to stay up on the forefront of that but, but boy it's hard right now with covid oh, yeah. i mean it's just kind of killed all the momentum that we had for that you know, that's a, I think that's a, a common myth of being a business owner. A lot of folks in the service industry uh, are technicians or something of that nature. And they're like, oh, you know, I'm just going to go open up my own business, right? I'm sure you've seen that yourself. <laughs> yeah. It oh, happens yeah. throughout all the service industries. In fact, it happens throughout all industries, but especially in the service industry. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Excuse me. Um, I know that it happens quite a bit. Um, when I'm looking at that, that's the, the things you were just talking about are the things that are the unknown that they don't know yet. All the different oh, yeah. people decisions mm -hmm. you have to make, all the different software decisions you have to make. And you can't just make it one time and then that's it. I mean, mm -hmm. you just talked about how many times you've actually had to change things like mm -hmm. technology and software and people mm -hmm. and culture sure. and training, you know, all of those types of things. And, and it's, it's difficult for uh, people that are out there wanting to start their own business. And that's just simply the things that they don't know. Hey, you're listening to The Brainstorm with Matt and Mike. We have uh, the president and CEO, Glenn Matthews of Modern Exterminating with us. And we're talking about just building and sustaining a great family owned business. Uh, Glenn's been there uh, quite a long time. He grew up in this business. His grandfather started a 65 year business. He still got one of those original customers today. Uh, so Glenn, talk to us a little bit about what you're seeing from people that's wanting to start their own business now that might be jumping out of a business that's set the business that uh, is really positions them for excellence and now they're just going to go out and open up their own business they they, they have a long road to hoe don't they well they do and i think they don't know the real cost involved i think they think you know hey i've never had to pay for this chemical i you know they don't know how much it costs they don't know insurance mm -hmm. costs vehicle costs uh customer acquisition costs things like that they also don't know a lot about maybe the accounting that's involved or you know the taxes that are involved things like that i think a lot of people are probably in for a surprise once they find that out i was in for a huge surprise when i started looking at at all the things we have to pay all the bills we have to pay yeah. you know the the labor you you know, labor is our number one expense yeah, obviously insurance benefits insurance benefits and you got vehicle vehicle costs, costs uh, fuel, fuel costs yeah. which have gone down which i'm i mean Thankfully. fuel cost at one point when fuel was four dollars a gallon i mean our fuel costs were huge mm -hmm. but now you know luckily that's come down but things like that people don't think about and you need more customers so what does that do and you got bigger marketing budgets yeah. right sure yeah, but we're okay with that yeah, yeah. yeah. oh yeah we're i'm sure okay you are right? yeah. hey. i'm sure y'all yeah. are y'all are very <laughs> much okay with, with marketing <laughs> budgets but yeah i mean that's one thing they don't understand right if those customers I mean, when our phones are ringing, that was 65 years worth of right you know, reputation worth of you know customers all the advertising you know, no marketing of no name branding for 65 right. years i Absolutely. mean they think they're going to open up and their phone's going to ring like ours did, right. but they're mistaken i mean right. they're, they're really like you said themselves. your grandfather started 65 years ago with two well yeah. mm -hmm. sooner or later it had to be three yeah and four mm -hmm. and five mm -hmm. and so those three four and five and so on and so forth didn't just happen yeah you had to advertise right mm -hmm. because back then it was no name recognition he had yeah. he nor more than likely he probably knocked on doors mm -hmm. right he probably got those two to help sure. build to three and four and five right mm -hmm. i mean i'm sure there was a lot of hard work and and the difference is there's still a lot of hard work oh certainly like, i see you almost everywhere i go mm -hmm. plus you're still out there beating the streets and talking to people you're still building relationships mm -hmm. you don't just leave it to your staff you're doing it no i i tell my staff i'm i don't ask you to do anything i wouldn't do so i like to go out there i like to network myself i like for people to know me i think uh, a lot of times um owners don't get out enough and, and network and, and and do things they don't think they have 
have to. They think, oh, I've got somebody for that. But nothing, I'm talking nothing, is better for a business than the owner being out there and being, you know, the face present. of the business. I mean, being look present. at some of the people in our community who the owner is is a face and are still present in their business. They're very successful, mm-hmm. and that's kind of what I wanted to emulate. I wanted to be somebody who, when people saw me, they said, hey, that's Glenn. That's the owner of Modern Exterminating. And I want them to be able to come and approach me, call me, you know. I mean, I, I'm... I don't I always answer the phone when my customers call. You know, I don't, you know, screen them. I don't, you know, tell my secretaries, you know, tell them I'm not here or anything like that. They can be transferred straight to my line which goes straight to my cell phone. So at all times I'm accessible and I'm available. So and I think that's very important yeah. and I'm I'm going to be honest with you if 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 I ever couldn't be available, I don't know that I'd want to do this. You know, I want to be accessible. That's the difference you get with modern exterminating, I think, is you get the 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 the, the family treatment. Right. You know, I will talk to any customer no matter how many accounts they have with us. They could have one account or they could have 100 accounts. I'll pick up the phone every time. And you know what I, I'm going to you know, we've known each other for a couple of years mm-hmm. now. And uh, I actually met you, I think, through Jared, and I don't really remember, but mm-hmm. uh, just being in the community and being at different, the same functions and same events through like the Columbia Chamber and other things of that nature. Uh, but I'd like to publicly pay you this compliment here. Okay. You know what I really like about, uh, one of the many things that I really like about uh, our relationship, Glenn, is because mm-hmm. like you're a business owner and you're out there you're trying to continue to build your business, mm-hmm. even though you know you don't really have to have that one extra customer. And that, that's one that's one cool thing is, and I'm sidetracking all of a sudden, you don't have to have that one extra customer. You want them. You don't mm-hmm. have to have them, but sure. you still want them. And that's that's a big deal. But what I really what I really appreciate is like when you when you meet me or see me on out there on the event uh, in the community and you see other people out there in community, you're actually truly present. Like mm-hmm. you care about what they have going on. You ask them about Certainly. how their business is and about how their life is. And mm-hmm. you don't just try to sell you and then leave. Oh, it, yeah. it, well, that's what I really love about you is it's not all about you. It's You actually are present and care about the people you're talking to. Well, I appreciate you noticing that because I, I really do. And, and you know, uh, I have plenty of relationships with business owners that I don't do business with and they don't do business with me, but right. I still genuinely care about them and their business. And I want them to do well and succeed. Even right. my competitors, I'm, I'm good friends with. And I generally want them to, to right. succeed and do well because if our industry is doing well, we're all doing well. That's right. And, and that, But that is a mm-hmm. that's a trait that's unteachable you know jared and it's i an know authenticity some, factor it right? is you and i know jared some really people that sell 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 oh, sell yeah. sell and if you're not buying they're out right mm-hmm. right but it, it's really nice to have an authentic like you were just talking about an authentic business leader in our community that actually wants to talk about someone else wants to talk it's a it's a very humble approach and right. i absolutely love it well i appreciate that i even have people that aren't my customers that'll call me on the phone absolutely. wanting free advice and i'll give it to them because i don't mind i you know maybe one day there will be an opportunity right. for me to do business with them but even if there never is i still want to help them and i still want to do the best i can for them and i just think that's just being a good citizen a good I mean, well, right, I don't, right. you know for our viewers and our listeners i don't know why you wouldn't want yeah. to take your your pest and your termite and mosquito and all the other types of services over to modern exterminating because you could you got a problem you don't have to worry about you can actually call glenn matthews himself and he'll answer the phone so let's transition over to those services okay you and i've talked a little bit about those services in the past but you know one of the the i guess the the largest ticket item if you will or one of the largest ticket items that you guys uh, have in your industry as whole is the actual termite sure well, why do people t- why do people leave termite bonds just non-renewed or not even uh not even sought out well that's a great question i wish i knew the answer to yeah, that a lot I mean, of times. I, i'm I, amazed I, at how many people do i think the answer is lack of education <clears throat> you know they think oh i don't really need this termites aren't really going to eat my house maybe i'm on a slab versus a crawl space so it they doesn't think, matter yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i mean slab or crawl space whatever i mean termites will eat it and we're in south carolina and termites are very very active in south carolina this is one of the worst states for termite activity in the whole country so i mean termites do five billion dollars nationwide and damage every single year 
year you know and um you know a lot of that occurs in south carolina so obviously if you have any kind of property be it a business a home and a lot of people think oh well i only have to protect my home i don't have to protect my business yeah you do have to protect your business termites don't care they don't care yeah. if it's your business they don't care if it's your home they'll eat wood they'll eat you know um uh any kind of cellulose debris or cellulose product so i mean obviously you want to keep any property or any structure you have under termite mine but i just think what it is is it's a lack of education and it's a lack of knowledge yeah and i try to educate people and tell them you know i have seen so much damage in my career i just it, it boggles my mind why people don't have termite bonds but i see it every day people call me every day and usually it's too late by the time they yeah, call that's you know? right well they're calling because now all of a sudden they're noticing that they're, they're noticing, noticing that yeah. there's a problem right oh certainly yeah so, so uh, out of all the other services such as you know just i guess spray like pest control right mm -hmm. and then you have uh, bed bugs you take care of those types of things we do we have two bed bug heat machines okay and um one's a pull behind trailer that's uh, a, a little bit more of a um, you know, a, a, a real kind of Mac Daddy solution, I okay. guess you would call heavy it. Heavy duty, right? Yes, the heavy duty, it's the big dog, and um, we 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 bring that out on 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 some of our se severe infestations. Yeah, and uh, it's a self-contained machine. It takes four hours to eliminate the bed bugs. It heats the house up to 140 degrees and holds it there for several hours until the bed bugs are dead. We also have a smaller heat machine for like to bring up into buildings for apartments, smaller rooms, smaller okay. infestations. So we we do have heat machines and we do chemical as well but i really really like the heat because the heat uh really can spread out throughout the whole uh area and, and kill the bed bugs and and once the it heats up to about 130 140 degrees those bed bugs are dead so because once you get them unless you have someone like you to come in to fix them there's no like getting rid of them right well bed bugs and termites are two things i would say do not diy yourself okay yeah. uh you know a lot of people can diy their pest control i get it right. you know they're what they're using isn't quite the same thing we're using Right, it's not they the don't same have the knowledge right. we we have but two things i would say do not ever diy are bed bugs and termites because yeah. it just re requires a special type of chemical special knowledge special equipment and uh so i don't recommend that for anybody how about uh, mosquito control i mean we're in live in south yeah. carolina right so oh in, yeah in those in those months mosquitoes will tear you up over the last 10 12 years mosquitoes have become a big part of our business um and it's ever since the cities and municipalities stopped uh spraying for mosquitoes themselves we've taken that mantle and we've run with it and uh so over the last 10 12 years we've gotten a big increase in mosquito work and then sometimes i laugh I, uh you know when our customers don't even know we do mosquito like they'll be using a company that that says mosquito like right mosquito whatever mosquito this right. but we also do mosquito and and sometimes even our customers will be with one of the mosquito companies right. not knowing and i guess that's you know lack of education on my part sometimes of not letting them know that we do the mosquito but we've been doing the mosquito longer than the mosquito company so yeah. obviously you know that's another thing we offer and um i always laugh i think well why would they want another company that's just another bill and another technician right. coming out right but um, a whole another relationship a whole another relationship but yes we do do mosquitoes and 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 you know it's it's become a huge part of our business as well and uh i mean i'm glad that they stopped yeah. for mosquitoes you're listening to the brainstorm with matt and mike today we have uh, glenn matthews the president and ceo of modern exterminating we were just talking about uh, the services he has uh with, between uh termite pest bed bugs mosquitoes and so as a business owner sometimes you have to expand uh those services and i remember you telling me a story about you said matt you know how i got in the mosquito business you've been doing mosquitoes 10 or 12 years you were just saying mm -hmm. and you and i'll let you tell the story but i love this because so many business owners are like i'm not going to do that and i'm not going to spend x amount of money until i know that i can get an roi on it so on mm -hmm. and so forth and glenn you said you know how i got in the mosquito business finish that story well the way we got in the mosquito business is uh we'd been talking about it but we didn't have any customers and so i you know it's kind of like what do you do the chicken and the egg right. kind of theory of you know do you start a program with no customers or whatever so what happened was uh, our phone rang one day 
and it was a uh, an existing customer of ours and she said i saw your mosquito billboard and i want a mosquito spray well at the time we didn't have any mosquito <laughs> billboards she had seen another company's mosquito billboard mistaken it for ours and then called us and wanted a mosquito service so i looked over at my service manager i said well i guess we're getting in the mosquito business <laughs> so um like that, that was our first mosquito somebody customer, needed it and you were going and to it was by the seat of our pants and, and 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 later on i did you know um attend several classes to try to uh figure out you know where i wanted the price right. point to be right. and, and how i wanted to treat them and with what chemicals and all that but it was really just kind of see to your pants all right let's let's yeah. start it somebody and, needs and, it let's go yeah, fill it and that's the way we did it and um you know uh and, and the rest is history and and really uh I, I generally try to put a little more thought and planning and preparation into things before i get into the business but that was one i was just like all right let's fly by the seat of our pants yeah. and do it let's go i knew it there was no better time than then i knew it fit with what we did i knew it fit with our yeah. whole grand scheme of things so i knew that it was something that we could probably do well so i just went ahead and jumped into it i love it. that so i love it you saw a need and you said hey let's go fill it it's one of the few things i really would with not much planning or anything and just jumped into and been very successful yeah. with some things you jump into and you're not as successful with right but obviously that was something that i've jumped into that I was very successful with yeah i think a lot of especially now a lot of people have kind of had to add services or things that they can have other success with especially during covid try and be adaptable mm -hmm. what do you see over the next year two five years what do you see services or where do you see modern going in the in the future well it's funny you ask that um we're actually uh have signed a lease on a building out in aiken and uh we're going to put a, a brick and mortar out in aiken and um um, so that's going to be our first step. That's going to be our first step in kind of uh, an expansion. And then um, actually, uh, uh, y'all, I'll be the first to tell y'all this, but um, I've been looking at a property literally right down the street from here that we're looking at buying to make a Lexington branch. Yeah. Now, we're still in the negotiation process. It may or may not go through. But one area that I see of our business that can really expand is here in Lexington. I, I don't have a brick and mortar here. We've been servicing Lexington, well, since day one. Right. But really, we don't have a strong presence out here and i think it's because we don't have a lot of brick and mortar or we don't have any brick and mortar out here and, yeah. and so that's one thing that i was going to do within the next year is try to do some brick and mortar out here in lexington have a better presence maybe market it a little better yeah mm -hmm. and 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 so that's one of my my i few, love that well really near future goals not like a far future goal but right. a near future yeah. goal is getting a few branch offices getting more presence mm -hmm. and um you know i used to think maybe i didn't need branch offices that i could just serve just everything service out it all of, from out of central one office. but i really now see the value of having a brick and mortar uh, an actual office in an actual me. office in a, in a time when everybody's trying to uproot their offices i'm thinking maybe planning offices might be a good thing to do mm -hmm. especially for a service business because you got to have that you know people got to know you're there right well, and, and here's one thing it community. does i mean obviously outside the obvious from signage and and mm -hmm. but, but you also have more presence from vehicle wraps so vehicle wraps are riding around now you see your brand yeah. gets seen mm -hmm. more often mm -hmm. in those communities because they're stationed there sure more than likely you would be hiring technicians or reps in those immediate areas so mm -hmm. now they're out eating breakfast and lunch with modern exterminating logo on their apparel sure so now you're again your brand is being seen more mm -hmm. and, and so that's what happens and i can go on and on and on and so i don't disagree with you at all i think that is a great idea i mean and you can just i love your expansion ideas too i mean you're located in columbia so what you're doing is taking something about i guess southwest is aiken from columbia by an hour you know we're uh more west i guess from columbia mm -hmm. um and so about uh what would you say 25 minutes or so from your columbia office you put something out there you got sumter you got and you know what else i like about some of those uh, like aiken ideas is you're going to places you're not just saying okay i'm gonna put it in greenville or charlotte north carolina right. or atlanta yeah you, you, what you're doing is you're going to places that has plenty of consumer needs but a lot less competition because uh -huh. you're going to a little bit less serviced area which i love well atlanta sounds great until you realize that there's like 
10 top 100 pest control companies yeah, yeah, all yeah. in Atlanta. And you oh, literally yeah. would you have know? to open up 30 branches from efficiency perspective and yeah. fuelage and getting around and things of that nature. There's plenty of uh, customers and money to be made in smaller towns. Absolutely. And, and so, um, and very few people are servicing them. Yeah. So I, I, I really uh, thought it might be a good strategy, and, and I'm glad that you think it might be as well. Oh, no, I absolutely You service do. those smaller towns, and you get more you get more brand loyalty. You know, those are the customers that they you don't keep leave. for 65 years. They don't leave. Oh, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Talk to me about, like, you were, uh, Jared asked you this question about training and education, but I know that uh, that's the ongoing training you guys were talking about. But just to become a, a technician or someone who understands the mosquito area or just the pest, and I mean, that's something that's heavily regulated. It so is. Talk, talk me about like certifications that modern exterminating has in order for people to feel safe and protected when you guys come out. Well, we have all the certifications, of course, that you need to operate. You have to have what's called a 7A license, which uh, is a structural pest control license. Okay. We also have a, um, a, a license for mosquitoes. You have a license for, you know, ornamental like lawns and things like oh, okay. that. So, okay. So all those licenses are different, but we have all those licenses. And uh, of that's course, a lot of education. Yeah, it's a lot of education. Also, you have what's called the master termite technician, master pest control technicians, which we have several on staff. And uh, then you also have, um, you know, your insurance that you have to have as well, yeah. you know. Um, a lot of people don't, you know, really think um, a lot about the, but we have to have mm -hmm. specific types of insurance uh, for our business, you know, to, to cover things, you know, like chemicals and, and, and things like that, termite damage. So I, I always like to have that specific kind of, you would kind of call it a pest control mm -hmm. type insurance as yeah. well. One of our clients, Glenn, you may you, you may not even know this. One of our mm -hmm. clients that we're redoing a website for right now is Carolina PCO. Oh, really? Yeah, they've okay. been a client mm -hmm. of ours for or quite a while, and they're a distributor for our listeners and viewers. They're a distributor too. Pet like you, you was just a, a homeowner can't go buy from Carolina PCO. They mm -hmm. they sell directly to. Um, uh, pest control service companies like modern exterminating and other companies i'm not saying that you're a client i don't really know if you're a client we've been a client of theirs for 60 years there you yeah, go so, so you do mm -hmm. so you are awesome. a client oh yeah and so they're a distributor of product so when we're talking about pest control here we're not talking about technicians that pull up their front door lows and goes in and buys the some roundup the or, roundup or some, it's a diy yeah, yeah, yeah. product <laughs> right here we're talking about chemicals that you need education and certifications mm -hmm. to spray because when they spray it works right right this is not like okay i'll spray this type of this stuff down and i'll probably have to spray again next week too mm -hmm. right this stuff actually works oh yeah it does and um normally what we have is is far stronger than anything you could buy at lowe's mm -hmm. or buy at the home depot obviously ours we have to mix mm -hmm. and uh, we have to have dilution and mix rates but um and also we know how to apply it where to apply it mm -hmm. so um those are kind of values you get it the kind of value you get from pest control companies is that we just know what to apply how to apply it and where to apply it uh the general homeowner may not know where to apply a pesticide they may think oh i'm just going to spray it all around the house and it's going to work no i mean you might have to uh instead of doing all that spray it in one specific area to get rid of you know the pest that you're seeing mm -hmm. so that's the kind of knowledge that we have that maybe the general homeowner would not have so and we have all the equipment the spray rigs mm -hmm. the pressurized spray yeah, rigs, the, the bngs the heat machines mm -hmm. the you know everything that you need so, and the knowledge to and do the it knowledge yeah and yeah, the licensing and, yeah. to do it so i mean uh whereas i don't you know say well don't you know diy because i mean i think some people can can be effective diying right. it, but when you have a heavy infestation diy is not going to get rid it of the gonna, problem it ain't gonna right. work it's yeah. not it ain't gonna work so what, what are your business needs right now are like are, are you looking for people are you looking just to grow in your technology i mean what, what 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 are you looking for right now what are you looking to do right now to help benefit your business well i mean we're always looking for good people for good, good people good people is you know that's the backbone to any business hard to come by yeah and if and if we can find a good person i'll hire a good person even if i don't have a spot for them yeah just so i can have them train them and then put them into a spot i always say in business you never know what's going to happen i've had people up and quit and say you know today's my last day it's always good to have a bullpen yeah you know and and, and one thing that i talk about at, at, at our pest control conventions that i go to and i hear about and other companies tell me about and i talk about is having a bench and you need to have a bench because people will up and leave it they're not as loyal as 
as they used to be. How how, uh, how should if people are listening and they would like to uh, to talk with you about possible career opportunities, what would be the best way for them to get in touch with you? Uh, I would just say go on our website. We have a careers tab. Mm-hmm. Click on the careers tab and fill out the online application. Okay, that's the best way. Yeah. Rather than calling up and, and you know right, you may right. or may not talk to the right person, that careers tab goes straight to my wife who's an HR and we review every application personally. Mm-hmm. Me and my wife personally review every single application that comes in to see if that person you know we think that a second interview might be um, appropriate yeah man let me tell you this has been a great conversation i mean well here's what I, i'm just going to kind of summarize it so mm-hmm. here, here's what i've heard you say i've heard you say you've been in business 65 years mm-hmm. you really are are concerned with uh what the customer's needs are, what your mm-hmm. client's needs are, both from a business perspective. Because am I right, you do both uh, homeowners and businesses? Yeah, we do homeowners, businesses, industrial, residential, commercial. Restaurants. Just a, restaurants, just about anything that would need pest control. Yeah. And, and, if, and am I right that like restaurants have to be on like on a regular pest control? But they're supposed to be. Yeah, they're supposed to be. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you they all are. <laughs> yeah, but, yeah, that's but they're true. Supposed to be. And your better ones, of course, you know, are yeah, are sure. going to have a, a a pest control program. Yeah. But you know, I mean, uh, right now though, I mean, I I know how it is. It's probably tough for them, and and right now they're probably looking to cut with any cost they can. Mm-hmm. You know, so uh, uh, but yeah, they're supposed to be. Let's put it that way. Yeah. So you're a business owner that really cares about. Uh, your client and your customer uh i know that you've i've been in your office before when you're on the phone with a customer uh that was having uh as you know some needs that wasn't mm-hmm. quite a customer of yours yet it was a prospective customer sure. that you were on the phone discussing those needs were and i just love that i know that you're a business that is concentrates on making sure efficiency and savings for the customer is mm-hmm. maximized and so technology is one of the solutions there sure. and you're really moving that forward love to hear uh about uh, the opening of the brick and mortars into different locations i like mm-hmm. that i like when other people are shrinking and you're actually growing you know what that's mm-hmm. called that's called taking over market share sure that's timing mm-hmm. that's timing it's all in the right timing uh, but just bringing a family owned business uh, from where it was to where it is and you know uh, as you continue to we're not getting any younger mm-hmm. as you continue to age I'm sure you're starting to figure out the legacy of where it goes uh, after you as well uh and so it's just really cool it's really really neat one of the coolest things though is which i've very rarely heard is a 65 year old company still having one of the original two customers that they had oh yeah well we're real proud of that and i yeah, think you have that's to a be. testament to you our to, be. to you know our business to you know our quality to yeah. our loyalty so mm-hmm. um obviously i'm real proud of that fact and and i know there's not a lot of 65 year old companies that could say that that's why i kind of brag about it a little bit absolutely it's, it's, it's something to be bragging about but but not only that i mean we do have a lot of customers that have been with us 60 50 40 years and and i i talk to customers almost on a daily basis that have been with us 30 to 40 to 50 years mm-hmm. all the time so it's not just a 65 year customer but the 30 40 year customer that that makes me proud as well yeah you know um I, I, you know, it just means a lot to me whenever I hear people tell yeah. me I've been with you 20, 30, 40, yeah. 50 years. And uh, that, that shows because, I mean, I think the lifespan of most service businesses is only a few years, yeah. two, three years. So obviously, if we can, you know, hold on to them 20, 30, 40 years, that's a testament to what we're doing. Oh, yeah. Check out uh, Modern Exterminating at pestfreesc.com. Thanks for joining us today on The Brainstorm with Matt and Mike and guest Glenn Matthews, the president and CEO of Modern Exterminating. Until next time, we'd love to hear from you. You can go to thebrainstormradio.com, check us out there, watch our YouTube, subscribe to our podcast, or catch us live on the radio on Monday mornings from 9A to 10A. Thanks for checking us out.